Professor Stewart has been a trailblazer in cracking the genetic code that may lead to MS as a lead instigator of the Australian MS and uh, of the Australian and New Zealand MS Genetics Consortium ANS gene. They recently, this group, this, this collaborative group of 40 researchers in Australia and New Zealand, recently identified two genetic regions associated with MS susceptibility. And the International MS Genetics Consortium uh, is another organisation that Graham will talk about that will oversee 10,000 DNA samples being analysed from people with MS uh, in the biggest uh, genetic study uh, of MS. Professor Graham Stewart is from Westmead Millennium Institute and will discuss our current understanding of what we believe to be behind MS susceptibility. Professor Graham Stewart. Thank you very much, uh, Jeremy, and, and thank you for the opportunity to speak at this wonderful meeting. I think everyone in this audience understands the basics of multiple sclerosis, uh, a disease where the immune system attacks and strips off the myelin sheath, uh, a disease in which the central nervous system initially uh, repairs that damage and then over time fails to do so. I think everyone here probably is well aware of the, the human side of, uh, of, of that, uh, the, that pathology. I think you're probably also aware that MS results from as yet uh, identified environmental factors uh, acting together with genetic factors in people who have inherited susceptibility uh, to that disease. Uh, the next speaker is going to talk about some very important advances in current thinking of the environmental effects, uh, and I'm going to focus mostly on the, uh, on, on the genetic effects. So I think you're not here to hear those basics today. I think you're probably here to, to try to get some understanding of how is uh, research progressing and how is that impacting upon the way we think uh, about the cause of, of this disease. Each year with a new crop of medical students, I, I ask them to imagine a world in which all of the major diseases of humankind have been cured and uh, prevented. No cancer, no heart disease, no rheumatoid arthritis, no diabetes, no multiple sclerosis. And then I ask them how far do they feel that medical science has carried us along that journey because research is a, a continuous journey. Are we almost there? Are we halfway there? Uh, are we perhaps just barely started? This year we came to the conclusion that we're about 5% towards that eventual wonderful circumstance, which will happen. Sadly, probably not in my lifetime, but it certainly will happen, I, I believe, within the next 40 or 50 years. When I asked them that same question 10 years ago, we concluded at 1%. So in the last 10 years, the world has five times the essential knowledge to reach that point of cure and prevention of all major disease. That's a remarkable advance. So we are at the moment at a, at a circumstance in which the pace of medical science is quickening. When we turn to multiple sclerosis, we can claim, I think, very much more than that. Because if we come back to that one half of the equation, uh, the genetics, uh, we find that the first gene proven to be associated with MS was found in the 1970s. It took until 2007, 30 years later, that the second gene, one called interleukin-7 receptor, was confirmed internationally after three or four years of research. As I stand here today, we don't have two or three genes. We now have 17 of those genes just two years later. By the end of this summer, we will know almost all of the rest, maybe 90% along the journey of defining and discovering the multiple sclerosis genes. So how on earth has that happened? Why is that aspect of MS research so far ahead uh, of so many other areas of medical science? Well, there's a simple explanation, but there's also a huge amount of human endeavour and investment of funds that got us to that point. On February the 9th, 1941, Winston Churchill wrote to President Roosevelt uh, a, a, a brief letter. It contained a simple sentence, a simple but profound sentence, in the style that won uh, Churchill the Nobel Prize for Literature sometime after the war. Britain had just uh, weathered the Battle of Britain and they were winning in the North African campaign. And he was before, of course, Pearl Harbor. What he said in that letter was simply, 
give us the tools and we will finish the job. That's what's happened in MS Genetics. The tools we've been given were first of all an international gift, uh, mostly funded by the United States, but an international gift of the whole roadmap to the human genome. The second tool was to have technologies and techniques which would allow us to mass produce data by putting large amounts of DNA samples through in a very short time and at an increasingly uh, acceptable cost. The third and perhaps uh, most relevant to this evening, to this morning rather, was uh, the international collaborations, national and international collaborations with the uh, concerted help uh, of people with MS and with funding bodies like MSRA, the Trish Foundation and others in here and right across the world that enabled us in Australia to test the samples on over 5,000 people with multiple sclerosis something that we would not have even dreamt of five or ten years ago. Up until very recently, experiments were commonly done on two or three hundred patients. Now we're talking about thousands. That resulted in Australia uh, contributing two of those new genes, not found elsewhere, and one of them that the next speaker is going to focus on is highly relevant to that interaction between genes uh, and environment and has sparked an exciting new direction uh, for research and potentially for, uh, for, for treatment. Uh, Australia is part of a bigger world and uh, as Jeremy mentioned, the Wellcome Trust in the UK has funded an international consortium to do a genetic experiment which should have had its results by now but for technical reasons have been delayed and will be available by the end of this calendar year on over 10,000 samples. That's an international bank of over 20,000 DNA samples of people with multiple sclerosis. When that experiment uh, in its first phase is concluded, as I said before, summer is over in, in Sydney, uh, we should be well on towards 90% of knowing the genetic factors. So as those uh, pieces start to clear the mist around the picture, what starts to emerge as the, um, as the current thinking on, uh, on multiple sclerosis? The first thing is that most of the genes discovered to date are affecting the way in which the immune system activates itself and then attacks tissue. So genetic studies have strengthened our current thinking on the importance uh, of the autoimmune uh, attack. That in turn, of course, is adding extra weight to the development of new therapeutics and uh, neurologists uh, now working with you, with people with MS, uh, have between you in the equation of what drug should I take now uh, an increasing portfolio of medications, some of which still at clinical trial level, uh, increasingly over the next five years. There are some really remarkable new uh, medications uh, that are based in the studies of the cause of MS which show that the immune system is extremely important. Uh, those uh, studies are also pointing towards which part of the immune system so we can attack those parts that are responsible for the autoimmune attack while le leaving cells of the immune system to move on and look after uh, control of infection and other things. Uh, of course, there'll be stumbles along that journey. Uh, one of them is an infection called PML that you would be aware of uh, that has slowed down the use but not prevented the use of a, of a superb drug called Tysabri. But science is working on that at an equal pace so that as we discover side effects of effective drugs, current thinking moves on to, well, let's know more about those side effects and let's make sure we can prevent them so the new drugs can still be used. So as I mentioned, current thinking um, and, and current research are still lining up with those two pillars of environment and genetics. But at the end of it all, uh, this is a disease of the brain. It's not a disease the immune system might be causing it, but the target organ is the brain. And furthering the understanding of, of neurobiology or neuroscience, and in particular the neuropathology of MS, uh, is a very important uh, third part of the, uh, of the overall landscape. 